David Staples here for the Ebon Journal. Today I'm going to talk about why you should not trust anyone who makes a COVID prediction, especially about case counts into the future. Most of all, I'm going to talk about why you shouldn't trust yourself on this issue. If you're full of predictions and thoughts that it's either going to get really bad or it's going to get better, you should really question that. From the start of the pandemic, our top experts in this field in infectious disease, disease have been totally wrong, repeatedly wrong about how the COVID pandemic is going to go. Famously, just as this virus was spreading out of Wuhan, China, and China was completely locking down, shutting down, re reacting to this like it's never reacted before to an infection in China. Dr. Teresa Tam, our Chief Medical Officer of Health for Canada, was downplaying the virus, uh, quote, in terms of how, how common it was going to be in Canada. Tam said, it's going to be rare. She didn't think it was going to be a big issue here. That's why we didn't shut our borders to China or other countries with major infections early on. When it came to Alberta, we had AHS, and they made some predictions in April where they thought they were projecting. Now, this was the extreme projection, but their extreme projection was there could be as many as 1.6 million cases of COVID in a few months in Alberta, and as many as 32,000 deaths. So we went from Tam, an expert, you know, it's going to be rare, not a problem, to this extreme projection on the other side. This is this is a possibility here. We could have as many as, as uh, 32,000 deaths in a few months from COVID. Fast forward to June 2021, and Dr. Dina Hinshaw is looking at COVID, and she projects, well, um, with the vaccination rate and acquired immunity here, we're not going to have a problem with COVID um, going forward to the extent that we'll, we, we need restrictions and that we're going to have our hospitals overwhelmed again. Well, by um, September, everything had changed. Our hospitals threatened to get overwhelmed. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of important surgeries canceled because her projection was wrong. The most recent example of this is the Alberta and Canadian Medical Associations, who in the face of this crisis in the hospital, hospitals, said dire times call for drastic measures. And they call for this fire break lockdown, this, this hardcore massive lockdown. Uh, everyone's going to be locked down again, not just the unvaccinated, all the vaccinated. And this was, gonna, this was, this was what was needed in their view to stop the outbreak in Alberta. Well, uh, the government rejected that advice from uh, our leading medical authorities. They didn't take them up on it. Um, schools stayed open, theaters stayed open, malls stayed open, businesses, restaurants stayed open. People, thousands of people going to Oilers games, Flames games, everything stayed open. So what happened? You know, based on that, all that talk from the doctors, you'd think it would be a nightmare. Well, 1,600 cases per day when the doctors made that prediction or made that, uh, that uh, call to arms for a massive lockdown. And without that in place, we have 600 per day. So without this massive lockdown, it never happened. We've, the case counts have crashed in Alberta. And what this says to me is, is, is again, people are just crappy at predicting where this virus is going to go. And I'm, I'm in that same camp. I thought like Hinshaw did in June, you know, based on, you know, we reached this herd immunity of 70% that it wasn't going to be a problem. Well, <laughs> I'm in no better place than anyone else is to predict this. Everyone does a crappy job at it, as far as I can see. And um, why is that? I think, I mean, it's, a, for, it's hard to predict the future in anything. This is a very, very complex issue. It's a changing uh, it's a new and changing uh, virus. Um, you don't know how people are going to react. They reacted in one way to to the virus initially with the pandemic where people are scared to death of it. Later on, last summer, this past summer, for instance, people are a lot less scared. So 
it changed. The variables are constantly changing. They're, they're multitudinous and they're complex. But I think the main reason is, and maybe I'm just speaking for myself here, but I see this in the doctors as well. We all see COVID through our own lens, through our own particular issues. I'm someone who wants this <laughs> pandemic to end. I, I hate it. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of lockdown. I see the harm of lockdown. I want it to go away. That bias that I have creates a blind spot. So I'm more likely to believe that COVID isn't going to be a big problem in the future. For the doctors, they had a, they had a crisis on their hands in the hospital. That's what they're facing. They, they need it to go away. They're getting, they're overworked. They've got too many patients. They're delaying surgeries, stressed like crazy. So of course, they're going to call for measures as if, as if COVID was never going to go away, as if it was going to grow and grow and grow from where it was then. Even though when you look at the COVID chart graphs, these, these um, outbreaks tend to last two to three months. And by mid-September, we had been going up for two months. And it seems by hook or by crook, they seem to fall after two or three months. Now, there I am again making a prediction in a way, going off a, a model which may or may not hold true to the future. So I just think we need to be careful about buying into predictions and basing policy on these predictions and be aware of our own bias in, in terms of thinking how things are going to go in the future. Because very often, as Dr. Tam, as Dr. Hinshaw, as the AHS modelers, and now as the Alberta Medical Association and the Canadian Medical Association have found out, it's easy to be wrong in your projections. Thanks for listening.